Hello again, it's Katie here. Um, yes, it's sad to be back in lockdown again. Um, sad, you know, for us as well as for you. Sad not to be able to get to see our families. Sad not to be able to travel. And uh, sometimes when I'm feeling a bit sad, I get a bit nostalgic for Ireland, um, which is where I was born. So one of the things I can do is kind of return there in a way, if you like, uh, via books, um, some of my favourite books um, that are either set in Ireland or directly about Ireland or written by Irish authors. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I could share some of those with you if you hadn't come across them yet. They usually bang on about them, so you should have heard about these ones. And um, the first one up is This Is Happiness by Niall Williams. Now I have a hardback version here and I know there's going to be a paperback version at the end of September at some point, so if I'm right, so. Um, but this is an absolute gem. It comes to us from Bloomsbury. Um, I have waxed lyrical about this one before, so um, nothing new. Um, look, it's, it's, a, it's a rare thing, this book. It's, I suppose I'd call it a sort of a slow waltz or a, a kind of meander after a, a lost tune. There's this feeling of um, gentleness and an amble through through the book, which, which gives it a very unhurried feel. Um, it's set in Ireland before um, electricity has come, or at least we're in Faha, which is in, I think, County Clare, and electricity is just about to, to arrive. They're one of the last converts. And, and we're in a place that is, it's rained all the time. No one's ever known a time when there hasn't been rain. And I think Niall Williams, like, he, likes, he likes rain. He writes about this um, in other books. But then one day the rain stops. The construction people are turning up to hook Faha up, bring it into the, the new age. And um, we witness all of this from the household of Noel Crow, who's a young, um, well, he's a young seminarian, sort of uh, on sabbatical, if you like, from that. Um, something not so wonderful has happened to him back up in Dublin. So he's come down to his grandparents, who are very much not with the times. They're, they're clinging to the older ways. And it's, um, there's, in, who comes to live with them is this lodger, Christie, who's a real, he's just a whimsy of a man. He's, he's probably got more stories in him than he's got blood in him. Um, and he's got a broken heart. And there's a story connected to Faha. Ultimately, it's a book about um, a way of life that was simpler. Um, it's not about, you don't feel a regret. It, there's nothing moral. Um, he's not moralizing about, oh, we've become too busy and too speedy. But it, it allows us to enjoy. And particularly me, when I go back, I go, oh my God, that's, that's an Ireland of sort of, almost of myth now. Um, allows us to go back to that time and look at the pace of our own lives and to, to look at uh, community, um, neighbors, uh, to see what actually having the light reveals. It's actually quite hilarious. I laughed my way through this, relished every single line. It's an absolute stunner. Um, yeah, it deserves every award out there. Um, I'll pop him over there and we'll do the next one, which is um, Night Boat to Tangier by Kevin Barry. And this one comes to us from Canongate. It is another one that was shortlisted for a whole stack of things, the, um, but The Booker, uh, particularly in 2019. And I think David really hung out for that one, thought that was an absolute stunner. It's um, written by Kevin Berry. Very pithy, very, very, very funny in places, but there's this sort of balance of sort of fun and bleakness. Um, it's real in that sense. Um, and we got these two fellas, um, Morris and Charlie, who are sitting on the quay in, in um, a foreign port and they're waiting for um, a boat to come in. And um, it's a terminal. So and they're a pair of smugglers. This is what, as you, you read through the book, you realise that they have a very shady, checkered, colourful, brutal, violent, um, shared past. Um, it's a very... In, in some ways it's a very blokey book because your main characters are these two men and they're waiting for, um, I think it's Mossy's daughter to turn up or she might be passing through. She's about 23, she's called Dilly, love that name. And you, she may or may not come or she may be arriving and she may be leaving, they don't know very much. 
and it goes back over the regrets of their life but just to make you laugh I mean laugh or sigh I don't know in the very very the very very first page um, you get these texts which uh, if you can see that it's all written as if it were dialogue they're they're short aphoristic sort of texts you get you get these two um, talking to each other and one say would you say there's an end inside Charlie I say you nearly have an answer to that question already Morris two Irishmen somber in the dank light of the terminal make gestures of long sufferance and woe they are born to such gestures and offer them easily it is nice in the old Spanish port of Algeciras I can't say that properly oh and this is as awful a place as you could master you'd want the eyes sideways in your head now that's an Irishism to me you'd want the eyes sideways in your head um, that brings me straight back home I loved it um, it's about it really is about um, it's about making it, it's about making a story about your past but it's also about a little bit about um, regret um, I don't know if at the end that's up to you as a reader do you forgive them for the things they've done or and do you empathize with them because they've made you laugh I think men get enough away with an awful lot when they make us laugh but have a look have a read it's it's um pristine it's crystalline it's gems strung on a you know those it's like those beads of light they're absolutely it's gorgeous it's gorgeous it's gorgeous here's another gorgeous 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 one donald ryan so we're in the paperback be the, the smaller format so that's been out a little bit that was shortlisted for the booker 2018 and the costa so you know you're onto a good thing comes from trans world so that's penguin lots to say about this one so you really will have to shut me up i'm getting more irish by the second and um, but i think in a lot of ways with this book less is really more and i think that's what the book is about and it's probably what my review should be about um it's a book about intersections you've got it it's in four parts so in the very first part you have farouk who's a syrian doctor um who's been forced to leave his country is traveling and gets separated from his wife and child and it's about that endless longing for them is he going to find them again um it's he's dealing with trauma in the most beautiful elegant sensitive prose in part two we've got lampy who's an absolutely shambolic young irish man um but he lives at home with his grandfather and his mother and he's no idea who his dad is he and his grandfather had these hilarious conversations absolutely gems um you swear you're there um and he runs or drives the van for a community um a care center um so and he, he's still hankering after an ex-girlfriend and that's, you know, you feel already that's not going to work out. So you've got him and then you've got John who's been a really not so good, has been very nasty in his life and he's looking back over that and it, there's a different feel to this piece at this point. He does write very distinctly in, in the different chapters. And then these, in the last part, these lives intersect. Now we're not really aware, at least you feel the characters intersect and it's very delicately done. It's how life is, I suppose. Um, that there are intersections that are more or less meaningful. In a way, I think it's also about look at who you intersect with. And instead of just taking it as casual, sometimes take the time. I think this is what Don Ryan's saying is take the time to dig a bit deeper, ask a question, be curious and see who that person really is. Um, an interesting book for our times. I know we're not intersecting much at the moment, but it's just, it's just divine and a neat little parcel of life in that book. Um, a gem. Now we've got another one up who's, <laughs> this one has been divisive hasn't it? Um, Sally Rooney's Normal People. Now either you love it or you hate it I think. I don't know anybody who's hated it but it's, it receives criticism I think and I think that's what makes a book super interesting. It comes to us from Faber and Faber. Um, lots of people have bought that from me and just wax lyrical um, and some people are coincidental don't know what the fuss is about. So you really have to make up your own mind about this one. Um, and some of us will sit there in the middle saying, there's something brilliant about this, and there truly, truly, truly is. But it doesn't mean um, that I, personally, I didn't fall in love with the book um, because it does, um, it remains very remote from the characters. Um, I think the writer has a remoteness about her writing, uh, Sally Rooney, which is deliberate um, and lets us be sort of, in a, in a way, godlike observers of the way these two people, Marianne and Connor, um, interact or they don't really touch each other. And I think that's a fascinating, she's done a fascinating thing, allowing us to see how people miss each other. Again, we're into contact. 
I don't think I did this on purpose, but now that I look at it, maybe I did. Um, I, I've often said to people, I think that she's written and preserved these characters and their, the way they encounter each other in sort of formaldehyde. They're like, they're, the, the book is divided like this into time. Time goes on and these two characters keep meeting, but they never quite get there with their love relationship, no matter what the television series did. Um, she does, um, she does pin these characters to the page and they kind of squirm and wriggle and you kind of squirm and wriggle as well because there's something um, naive about them. It really reminded me of some of my own, God knows I shouldn't be telling you this, but some of my own <laughs> experiences in Trinity College Dublin as well. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with it and I think that's what she, she set out to achieve. So, you know, I have to come down on the side of it being really very, very, very very clever, but it's not going to tug your heartstrings. I think it's, she's intellectualizing love. It's very, very smart. Um, a completely, now these are all the Irish, you know, here we've got Gervla McTiernan, who as we all know, is one of our favorites. Um, now she's written three. If you haven't read any of Gervla McTiernan, you have to. Born in Ireland, worked in Ireland, and now lives um, in Australia. We have to start with, we, well, I'll put the three up here so you can see them if we're going to do this. The Scholar, well, start in the right order, that might be intelligent. Um, the Ruin, number one. Set in Galway, The Scholar, number two. And then the most recent one, The Good Turn. They all come to us from HarperCollins. Um, procedural, set in Ireland, Galway. Um, uh, Cormac Brennan is a divinely drawn um, police investigator and his whole team is well worth exploring. There are characters in there that if Devlin McTiernan decided she was going to write a whole other set of novels based on this one or that one, she could easily do it. Every single one grabs you and you're not actually allowed to put the book down until you got to the end of it. As the treesome, treesome? Here's a treesome, new word for your trilogy. Every single one um, is better than, than the previous, which means goodness knows where Derva's going to go. I know she has other projects on the on the way that are being negotiated so i'm thrilled to hear that because i can't get enough of her myself so um do not pass those ones by if you like a good thriller and great character um portrayal last but not least i'm doing this again um i'm plugging charlotte mcconney i love this book i've told you already i will put my life on the line so this book's going to win everything. I've done it before. Um, this is a proof copy so it doesn't actually look like that. Um, and this one, is, I've, I've told you about it. If you haven't heard me, yeah, you better go and find that video because I'm not going to say it all over again and bore you to tears. But um, I'm claiming her as Irish and she writes into Ireland um, and Australia and basically the whole world because she's, she's written a very um, clairvoyant, um, wild journey into self and into a world that looks like um, it's becoming a little bit unknowable with the extinction of uh, all wild species. Fascinating, fascinating read. Um, and it'll be out soon in August. So keep breathing. We'll get to that one. Uh, I'll be putting that one in your hands. Well, not physically in your hands, but I, as you know, I will deliver it to you um, while we're in lockdown. Enjoy those and I hope you'll check in with me again next time I've got more books for you, which I will do, um, because I love telling you about the things that I enjoy and I hope that you will get to enjoy some of those too. See you again. Bye-bye.